And we're live. Hey everyone, I'm Marco. I'm one of the co-mentors here at the Firehouse Project, and I want to run you through the info session, talk about our program, what we do, what you learn, what you come out with, talk a little bit about our success stories, about our students, what they're up to now. So basically, there are three big blocks that I want you want to run you guys through. First one is the core curriculum. What are we going to teach you? What kind of features you learn? How to build? How technologies work together? Talk a little bit about job seekers, how we customize our curriculum for entrepreneurs, um, what happens there. And then I want a little bit talk a little bit about our support system, right? Our QA forum, how mentorship sessions work, what happens during our uh, weekly office hours. And then also, I really like to answer one question, which is what I usually get is like, Marco, what can I really do after I graduate from the program? And I want to give you guys a really straightforward um, answer to that. Now, while I talk, feel free to ask questions, right? Email me them. All of you guys have, have uh, my email address, so put them in the, in the chat box below and um, answer your question. And I answer your questions. Do my best to go through all of them. I already received the view, which are really awesome, and I get to them um, after I go through the main points. All right, let's jump straight in. Talk about the core curriculum. What are we going to do there? So basically, we have all of you guys um, go through pre-work. It's part of our application process, and I talk about that a little bit in more detail down the line. Basically, it's about two weeks where we have you guys go build a, a splash page, a simple website hosted on a server with HTML and CSS, and also write your first Ruby script. Um, going through that with the we only teach you something, but also figure out how good you're learning, how fast you're learning, and if you're a good fit for the program, right? So we definitely do a little bit of screening there. Um, on our pre-work applications. Now, once you get into, into the um, core program, right, the 12 weeks of the core program, we're going to teach you how to build a Ruby on Rails web application and launch that live in the first 10 hours in the program, right? So this is called the Firehose project, right? Drink from the Firehose, steep learning curve. That's what we're always aiming for. And the other thing we're really aiming for is, you know, if you're at a party and you pull out your phone and you tell your friends, hey, look, this is what I've done last weekend, last week. I built this web application. The response that we want to get is like, oh, wow, you built this? That looks awesome. And that's what we're aiming for with all our applications. So that's why they look good on mobile. They look good on tablet. They look good on desktop, laptop, right? So that mobile first design um, thinking is in every application that we're building together with you. So first 10 hours, right? What we want you to build is a simple web application that pulls quotes out of a database and randomly displays that on the screen. It's nothing too com complicated, but it gives you a 360 degree view of all the technologies that you're going to really learn in depth. So you're going to write some Ruby code, use the Rails framework, use GitHub and Git for version control and to back up your code. You push something live on Heroku, and it's something you can share with your friends already after the first few days with us. So that means that you actually be put in a driver's seat as a developer, and you get to share a finished product and actually ask for feedback or ask your friends and family to interact with that application. That's really powerful, having that feeling of like, wow, I just built something, and it's live out there on the internet, and people are using it. So that's what's happening in the first yeah, 10 hours, several days. So what do we do next? Right, We want to keep the learning curve steep. We call it nom nom nomster. It's, in, in essence, a Yelp clone. So the Yelp clone right, has features like, and I think the most fun one, the most important one, is integrating with the Google Map API. So that means that we're going to write all the Ruby code to when a user goes in and um, enters an address, we're going to grab the address. We're going to write the Ruby code to translate that address into latitude and longitude coordinates and then pass those coordinates back into the Google Map API so we get that pin on a Google map. We write the Ruby code to do all that, right? So obviously, that wouldn't be a great application at all that there was like a bunch of pins on a website. We want more functionality, right? It wouldn't be real world. So the next thing we do is we need um, star ratings and user comments, right? So if I have an awesome pizza place that I put on there with an address and you see the pin, somebody wants to come in and rate that, right? So I have star ratings and also user comments. So that means that. Um, a user can go in, authenticate, sign up, right? user login, log out, registration. We always need to build that feature too. Can go there, give me a star rating. Now, what would be nice if that happens is that I'm, as a pizza owner, get an automated email notification 
that somebody just left me a five-star review for my awesome pizza and said, hey, this is the best pizza in town, right? So I get an automated email notification based on that user in action. And then at the same time, I also want to have a dashboard. So we're going to build a dashboard where pizza owners, store owners, whoever, can see a little bit of analytics about their restaurant, the average star rating, the number of comments they received maybe last week, how many comments in total, those kind of um, information that's really helpful when, you, when I log in as a, as a store owner. A Yelp clone, right? Google Map API, user commenting, automated email notifications, star rating, dashboards, right? Um, also, we integrated image uploading there. So that takes about, I'd say, three, three to four weeks, most of our students. Now, what's next, right? Next, we're going to build an online learning platform with you. Now, when I say platform, what's really important here is that that means there's multiple user roles. So that means it's a platform, a learning platform. There's going to be instructors on one side. There's going to be students on the other side. Not only do we need to make sure we have our registration um, process down, so there's going to be um, you know, users that sign up as students, users that sign up as instructors, and then they can purchase courses from each other, right? So the important piece is that we need to track all of this on a database level. So that means if a student purchases from one instructor, that that student can see that instructor's full course, but not all the other courses, right? And so if you think about it, this is what powers so many web applications out there, is tracking all the different relationships between um, users of different roles and the pieces inside of the application, and how do we track that, and how do we write that code on a database level? It's really important, right? Now, the other thing that I said, and I think it's really important what we're learning here, purchasing, right? So we're integrating with a payment API, with the Stripe API, that's what we're using, so you can actually accept payments right on your platform, and actually you can use that platform to make money from um, immediately and can accept credit card and debit card payments right on your own platform. So besides that, we obviously need to use, uh, again, to use authentication. And we also need to, since it's an online learning platform, we need to deal with video streaming. So you need to, we need to learn those technologies and write that code to make video streaming popular uh, possible on our platform. The other thing that we're going to do is we want to improve the user interface um, on our platform for instructors when they set up new courses. So at that point, because it's a real-world example of what we're doing, we're introducing JavaScript and jQuery to you. So we're actually taking JavaScript and building a feature from scratch. And what we're building is a drag-and-drop interface for instructors to reorganize this, the separate sections of their courses. So that means right, we can drag-and-drop and reorganize without having these page refreshes, and we're writing the code to do all that right when we need it so we can improve the user experience by learning JavaScript. And that's kind of like what we're doing at the Firehouse Project. It's always real-world learning on real projects by building like something that actually makes sense right then and there, either for the user or for our application or to make something look better. So these were the three core applications that we're going through. Now next. We usually split our, um, our students up depending on what your personal goal is, right? So if you want to be a job, if you're looking to switch careers, you want to be on a job seeker track, we have something for you. If you're planning to launch your own application and push your application live after the program, right, your own idea, want to have that as a web application, we have a track for you. Now, let's first focus on this, right? So this is the last four weeks of the program, we're going to put you on a group project. That means we're building an advanced web application as a team. And that's really, really important because working together as a team is just like software is built in the real world, right? There's a saying, and that's really true. It's like the best software is built by amazing teams. Just coding by yourself and knowing how to do that is not going to help you find a job, right? What hiring managers and developers are looking for is your problem-solving skills and coding skills in a team environment. And we're going to do that for four weeks where we put you onto a um, group project so you learn how to refactor somebody else's code, get code critique, critique code, use version control in GitHub. And we're doing this all in building an advanced web application. And what we're building is a chess game. Right? Now, a lot of people usually come to me and be like, come on, Mark, a chess game, that's not that sexy. Might may or may not be true, but what it sure is is complicated. And that's what people care about who go into hire you down the, down the line, is how 
advanced of a Ruby code can you actually write? And in a chess game, you need to write really good logic and Ruby code to make the chess app, uh, application work, the chess game work. And just think about it, right? There's so many um, pieces that we need to keep track of where they're moving. We need to validate their moves on a database level. We need to make sure that they actually um, these moves are all valid, and then we keep track which piece was kicked out by who. We need to do that all on database level, and that's what makes it really challenging. On top of that, we're building this as a team, and most of you probably have never coded collaboratively on a team using the latest tools to make that happen. So that's a group project, right? We're doing that for all the job seekers because that is so important to land a job, having those skills and being a, a high-impact employee from day one. Now, when you have a, a startup idea, right, and you come to us and like, hey, I really want to have that my own idea launched, right? What do we do then? We take in the last four weeks, we're going through a capstone project. That means we're taking your idea and we're wireframing every little piece of the application out, and we break it down into coding pieces, and then we help you, with, together with your mentor, we help you build one feature after another from what all the uh, things you learned previously, apply that knowledge, and get your own application launched and out the door. So those are kind of the, um, <clears throat> the different pieces of the core curriculum, right? Building several real-world applications, and we're gradually more and more difficult. And then if you're on a job seeker, career switcher path, we put you in a group project, because that real-world experience literally helps you land jobs immediately and directly has a direct impact on how well you're doing on technical interviews. And then we also um, put you on the entrepreneurial track if you want to launch your own application, and we help you get that application live. Now, during all of that, what we really focus on is also writing really good Ruby code, right? So we have these coding challenges that we actually took from real-world real technical interviews, and especially if you're on a job seeker track. These coding challenges will help you write really good Ruby code. So you not only prepare for the technical interview process and writing really good advanced Ruby code inside of your chess application, but you're also going to learn like the advanced algorithms that you need to succeed in the workplace. And that happens starting on week two. And for the entrepreneurs, that's really important too, because that is what gives you the foundation to build something that is more challenging, more complicated, more engaging for your users down the line. Now, let's step back and talk a little bit about the support system that we're offering. So there's three different pieces, right? There's a Q&A forum, there's the mentorship sessions, and there's our virtual office hours. Now, let's start with the Q&A forum. And usually people go like, come on, Marco, Q&A forum. I type in a question, I get an answer. It's not that important. I get it, but it's what the Q&A forum enables us to do during the mentorship sessions. Now, let's zoom out. Think about Thursday night, you're coding, you're writing a code, you're building, a, the, for example, the automated email notification app, or you're just in integrating video streaming into your application, and you're working on some JavaScript, and you run into a problem, right? So now you're like, ah, oh, you solve, you're trying to solve the error message, doesn't quite work, right? You're stuck, right? So take a screenshot of the error message, paste it into the forum, and within an hour or two, you get an answer, and we help you get unstuck. What that means is when you arrive at your mentorship sessions, you can be error-free. You can use the forum to solve all your error messages. So when you arrive at the mentorship session, we can actually do a lot more coding than just simply going, hey, you know, on line 12, you're missing a semicolon. On line 32, on this file over there, you're missing a period or an equal sign, right? That, let's, let us take care of that in the forum so when you're in the mentorship sessions and you and I code together, we can go deeper into either algorithms. That's what a lot of students um, struggle with, and it's really important that writing advanced Ruby code, especially if you're on the career path. Or we can go into test-driven development, right? Testing is really, really important. It's an industry standard. You're not going to find a job if you don't know how to do that. And so for everyone else, zooming out a little bit, right? Test-driven development is writing software tests to automatically test if all of our pieces for our application are still working when we add another piece to it and push that live. So the test-driven development is the, the uh, way of writing tests first before we actually build the features. So test-driven development, if you want to learn more about it, Google, Google that, and, and you've really realized, like, oh, wow, this is a key piece of building any kind of web application, especially landing a job. 
So test driven development is really important, but it's also really challenging, right? So in the mentorship sessions, we can actually go in and deep dive on that and maybe we've written 10 tests and then we can be like, okay, here's like another 10 that we can write together that are more advanced. And so the mentorship sessions are really to take you from what your current level of coding and get you to the higher level of coding because we have that one-on-one -on -one time where we can actually go really deep in your code and fill the holes, the gaps in your knowledge because we notice what was going wrong beforehand. So that's the mentorship session. And then we also have the weekly office hours. And I personally, I love the weekly office hours because that's a place where all of our students come together and um, not only meet each other virtually, but also ask questions, right? We explain how the big pieces of a web application fit together. We go in and talk about error messages, right? And then oftentimes what happens is like people that are like in week eight, nine, 10, maybe on the group project, they go into ship, they have an error message and they screen share. And now people who are like in week one or two are gonna be like, oh wow, this is really complicated code. I'm not quite sure what's happening here, but I can see where I'm going. I can see where this is going and where I'm gonna be in the future. It's really helpful. Then on the other side, we have people in week one or two maybe having an error message, sharing their screen, and then week eight, nine, ten, right? So you're like, oh man, a few weeks ago I was exactly the same spot. Let me help you. Let me answer your question, right? And that's a really good way of actually teaching back and solidifying your learning in a completely different way. So that's what's happening in the support system, right? We're having the, the Q&A form that enables you to come to the mentorship sessions error-free, and then we're going to have the um, weekly office hours where we all come together um, and meet each other virtually once a week. So now, to answer that one question that I said at the very beginning, is like, what can you actually do after you graduate out of the, uh, the FireOS project, right? So obviously, besides having your own application life as an entrepreneur, or being really well prepared to finding a job as a web developer and joining a technical team, right? What you can do is, you, if you have an idea and you're like, oh wow, I really wanna build this, you can go spend a weekend, spend a few days, build, write the code, build that application, push it live, and get that first round of user feedback and then improve upon, right? And that's what we're giving you, the, the, the skills and, and the technical competence to build your own web applications, your own ideas, and launch them, right? Besides getting one out of the program and then also um, landing a job. That's kind of the short answer to like, what do I get out of that? You can get the skills to create. Um, now, guys, if you have any questions, right, feel free to email me. I'm gonna jump in now, use the last like 10, 12, 15 minutes, and have to go over to answer your questions. So let's see what we have and um, go on in there. Answering them one by one. So let me quickly check on that. Um, I know I got a whole bunch already. Um, let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, here, what's the application process? That's a good one. Okay, application process is, um, as I mentioned before, we do have pre-work, right? So the full program is 12 weeks. There's a two week um, pre-work session um, in, ahead of it. So actually you're getting 14 weeks. The pre-work is completely free. If you want to apply and be, if you want to be part of the core FIOS project and code with us and, and, and accelerate your skills, apply to the pre-work. The pre-work is um, on the FIOSproject.com. Look in the top nav, you see the pre-work there. Apply, maybe email me, let me know that you just applied. So make sure you got a slot in there. And um, I set up an account for you. We beam you directly into the learning platform of the FIOS project so you get to check out all the other things that you have that you would have access to during the core program so you can see how we run you through that. And we give you coding challenges, right? As I said before, I want to build, have you build a simple um, HTML and CSS splash page. I want you to write some Ruby code. And we refactor that code together and I want to review it, right? And then afterwards, when you went through all the challenges, um, and you, you're going to be accepted if you've written good code um, for the pre-work. So definitely apply for the pre-work, and we're going to um, get you through that, and we help you, we check in with you regularly, and see how you're doing going through that. And it's not only for us to see how well you're doing, but it's also for you to find out, do I really like coding, right? And already get a foundational knowledge, so once you come into the core program, we can really accelerate your skill. Great question. Um, let's see, what else we got? Um, we have how the materials presented. Oh, that's a good question. I love that one. Um, materials are presented in several different ways, right? So there's written documentation, written detailed coding guides. 
there's videos and then obviously there's the mentorship sessions where it's live, right? So written um, videos and live. Let's talk about the written guides first. Written guides is because we, we, it really teaches you how things work in the real world, right? Anytime as a developer, if you do open source, um, contribute to open source projects, or you take in some open source co code and pulling them into your own application, or you're integrating with an API, you need to follow written documentation. That means that if you're good at reading written documentation, you're going to be really good at being as a developer. So our written guides teach you exactly that, how to be good at following instructions on written documentations, right? Now, that's why we do that. The other reason why we have written documentation is becomes, because it becomes this rich, rich library of how we build certain features that you can always come back to, right? After, gradu after you graduate the Firewalls project, you have lifetime access to all the resources on the learning platform. So that means if you're going to um, building a feature, let's say um, a drag and drop interface in JavaScript, and you can't quite remember how to implement that again, you can quickly come back, find it within uh, a, few, a few seconds, and look at that coding snippet that you need and go, ah, that's how I do it again. And then you go, then you're on your own and do it again um, by yourself. So you have that quick reference. It's a lot faster in written guides than if you would have videos and you'd be jumping back and forth in the video play and be like, oh, where was that again? And that's not going to be good. So right, written documentation is how things work in the real world. So preparing yourself through that is really important. And also, it's going to be that rich library that you always can come back to. Now, the other thing is we have videos, right? We have overview videos. So that's not only teaching you how all the pieces of a web application, the model, the view, the controller, the routes, um, HTTP requests, how they all fit together. But you're also going to learn object-oriented programming or inheritance, really uh, important computer science concepts that will help you become a better developer if, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're going to go job track, right? We can do that a lot better through videos. And then obviously, we have the mentorship sessions, right, which is live one-on-one -on -one coding and teaching where I, for example, would tell you, as I said before, how to refactor your code to write a more efficient algorithm. So great question. Yeah, think about it, like written, video, and uh, live instruction. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, where is that? Oh, here, here's another email. Um, what's the difference between you and other competitors, um, like Block and Thinkful and a few other ones? Yeah, great question. Happy to answer that. I think it boils down to several things. Most important is, if you want to land a job, as a web developer, you need to know how to code collaboratively, work together as a team using the same tools as the professionals out there. If you don't have those skills, you're always going to be at a disadvantage to somebody who has those skills, right? Biggest difference for all the job seekers out there, group projects. You need to have a group project. So we do that. We start that in week four, and you get four weeks of group project in. And that not, not only is that important for your technical interview process, it preps you it actually becomes a technical interview process. So just like two weeks ago, one of our students who used to be an office manager is now a web developer at Artsy over in New York. And the way her technical interview went was basically she ran them through all the code that she wrote during the chat uh, on the group project, right? They looked at her test coverage. Um, they looked at her code to move the figures. They looked at what other people, how she reacted on GitHub to certain feedback on her code, how she refactored her code. And basically, they looked at her monitor for two hours, and she ran them through all the code line by line, what that does and how she wrote that, right? And so we hear that over and over again. Like another student out in LA got the question, how would you build a chess application um, in the technical interview? And he was like, well, funny you should ask. I just built one, and I built it as a team. How about we look at some of these what's called pull requests that I've done and I can show you exactly how I contributed, right? And you notice already like how that shifts the dynamic of a technical interview process. So why are we different? You get the group projects because it's real world learning how to work as a team. And again, the best software is built by amazing teams and you want to know how to be um, part of an amazing team. The other thing is depth of curriculum, right? The test-driven development, which is industry standard, is really something that's important. We have a full module on this where we teach you how to build a fully functional web application as a, um, in, with test-driven development in mind. So we're really building those software tests out. Right? Also, our applications are really advanced and complicated.
it there's like something that people actually use and share with their friends and get users onto it for example Pete took his Yelp clone and made it into a horse race analytics platform where now he can not only track who all the horse racing um, rings are around the country but he also gives his users um, analytical feedback of all the upcoming races so their chances of making better bets more informed bets increases because they know which horses race when and where and what their odds were at the last race during that weather and so forth right so just that we teach people in like week week three and four and really making them into something that that matters to you that you're passionate about that's what our students are doing so they're really deep so the depth of the curriculum besides the algorithm besides the test driven development and the uh, the cutting edge um, experience that you need to get a job or be a really good entrepreneur and be a technical enough entrepreneur to launch fully functional web application that's the other thing so again summary think group project depth of curriculum you won't get that anywhere else cool um let's see what else we got there's a few more um why is the group project so important okay i think i kind of answered that already just quickly is like you want to be that um person who has impact from day one on a on a web development team, so be that person. You can only be that person if you can sit down in your chair and start coding together with a team. If you don't know how to do that, you're probably gonna have a hard time actually even getting a job offer because you just like not, you can't compete with somebody who can actually demonstrate that they can do that. Also, one of the questions you get during any, any technical interview is, hey, so tell me about a time when you really overcame, come, uh, overcame a challenge during your coding process. If you only code by yourself, it's going to be simple error messages that every experienced web developer cannot really relate to the person that hires you because that was like so long ago. But what they can relate to is trouble working together as a team. Like you have merge conflicts. Somebody gave you bad feedback on your code and you everything blew up, then you had to fix it, right? How did you deal with those situations? And they're going to happen in the group project because it's like the real world. We're building something really advanced building it together as a team, things ought to be going wrong. And that's exactly that experience that you're getting already of the, of the real world while still in the program that will enable you to be um, more impactful from day one and be that better hire. That's why the group project is so important. Great question. Okay, let's see what else we have. Um, see, I just got one here. From Rachel, what is the instructor student ratio during office hours and how long are they? Um, okay, and there's another one. So let me do one after another, Rachel. So instructor to student ratio during the office hours. Usually we have anything between, so we usually have about 10 to 15 um, students coming to the office hours, and we have two co mentors in the office hours. Oftentimes you have guest co mentors in there, two or three. So I guess then we would say 15 students and four uh, mentors. So you get the ratio, maybe one to three, something like that. But what's um, one to four? Um, but what's more important is that you get that one-on-one -on -one time with your mentor. That's really the ratio that matters. So the instructor um, ratio and uh, student ratio really matters when you go to an in-person coding boot camp, where it could be that you have 30 students and one instructor. That's really bad, right, or 20 even. Um, because you're not getting that time and attention from the teacher because you're competing with all the other students. And there's a big difference between going to an in-person coding bootcamp and going to an online one where you get your personalized mentor that is just there for you to help you get to the next level. And oftentimes in an in-person setting, you're not going to get that attention to really get to that next level and accelerate your learning. So I think that answers probably your question. Or I hope so. Um, let me jump into your next one because you had another one. Um, on a group project, would I own part of the project? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You own that code that you did, and you actually, when you want, if you want a job, right? If you're on a job seeker track, you want to find a job. You own that. You you actually apply with code that you written as part of the group project, and be like, hey guys, if you want to know how good I am, here is a certain part of my code. You can see how I argued why we have that code, how I built it. Um, it's called a pull request. And, and I'm happy to talk to you more about that. And that usually is the entry into, oh, wow, we actually use the pull requests, which is pieces of code that our students wrote during the group project 
incent that to um, new mentors that would really want to have part of the program and say like this is what our students are capable with at the end of the program and usually what we hear back is like wow this is amazing I'm in right I just talked to a student from London who works together with a technical team and she was like so what can I do and I was like why don't you take the group from our previous group project and share with your professional web development team at a well-funded um, tech company and, and have them look at it and tell you what they think. And they came back, wow, I'm really impressed by that, right? So that's what the real developers say, and that's where we're going to get you. So you definitely want to own that, and you are owning that, because that's part of your entire um, portfolio is that code. Um, would there be a specific part I could show to recruiters and say I made that, so it's clear that I know how to do it and just didn't learn? Um, lean on my teammates? Yeah, absolutely. That's that pull request, right? You be, for example, and think about it. It's not like I build a top navigation. I'm in user authentication. That's not important, right? If you want to learn, um, if you want to land a job. What's important is that you say, I wrote the validations for the queen to move around the field and track that on the database here. I wrote the test coverage to make sure this doesn't break anything else. And here's my pull request, and here's how I reacted to the code critique from my students, right? That's what you want to share with recruiters. It's not about like, hey, look, I made this pretty thing here. It's like building that advanced code, making sure you have all that uh, Ruby code in there. So, Rachel, great questions. Thumbs up. Thanks so much. If you have more, let me know. Happy to answer more. Um, OK, there's a few more. Um, So there is Abby. Yep, getting to your questions now. Thanks so much for the reminder. It's just a lot of questions. OK. How often will students' code be evaluated, criticized by a mentor? Um, several times a week. So usually what happens is you, anytime you're done with an application, we do a, a check-in, we do a code review, code critique. We're telling you what you can improve, what you didn't do well, what you did well. Um, what happens during your mentorship sessions, we always review the code. So usually what happens, you come with a solution for um, a challenging problem. You wrote some part of the algorithm. Usually, because you're doing it for the very first time, that algorithm isn't that advanced, isn't that good. So then we refactor parts of it during the mentorship session. And then we go into um, have you do the rest of the code um, by yourself. And then next week, we can review that again. You also have the office hours where your code gets reviewed. So that's happening multiple times a week. Um, so you had a whole bunch of questions, obviously. I'm going in there. Um, how many students are in each cohort? Um, there is not really a cohort, as we have in um, in-person coding boot camps. Not like everyone starts at a certain date. We start new students every Monday, right? So you can enroll after you accept it and gone through the pre-work. You can start every Monday. So that is something that. Um, that is different from like a cohort, right? How many students are in the program at any given moment? Right now, I think we have anywhere around 35 students in the program at any given moment. Um, throughout the course, um, as students, that's just like in the real world, right? You got to think you interact through GitHub, um, which is where the code lives. A lot of interactions should be there. We have Slack as team communication. Um, with all the students, we also have obviously the video chats, right? It's Google Hangout, Skype, something, and um, then there's the forum, which is uh, another way of communicating. So I think everything like um, video chat and then GitHub, especially on your on your specific lines of code. Um, how do you strike a balance between teaching details of particular technologies and preparing students to learn new technologies on their own? Okay, first of all, that is like really important that you get the fundamentals done, right? Down. We really want to stress, like, learn how to write really good Ruby code and use the Rails framework, right? And in JavaScript as well. Once you have the fundamentals and you can think about how to apply um, code to solve problems in an application or build an application, at that point, we really encourage you to go out and learn new technology. So what did the student build an iOS app, right? They took the Yelp clone and made it in a fully functional iOS app. They're now runs on iPhone, right? So that's what they built. That's what we encourage them. Another student um, integrated with a tool called Firebase. That is basically like the lifetime, uh, the real-time update between two users, right? So if you're using like Google Docs, for example, and I type something on my side of the document, another user can see that on the other side, right? That real-time updating. 
or the little it's, uh, Marco is typing in Google um, in, in the chat, in the Gmail chat. It's the same thing. We integrated with that, right? So the JavaScript libraries that are out there. Um, but again, you do that when it matters the most and when you want to integrate with that. Sometimes we do that during the group projects. We do that also during the, the core module when we realize, oh, wow, here, Abby is really um, charging ahead. Now, how about we integrate with that? And it's a new piece of technology that you can add to existing applications. Great questions. I hope I could answer them properly. OK, let's see what else we have. Um, oh, what are some of you graduates doing now? It's a great question. Um, let me get into that one. What are our current graduates are doing? So, so on the entrepreneurial track, we have Steven. He's uh, in Sacramento, and he built his on-demand medical marijuana delivery app. So that basically means that people can go onto his platform. They can say, hey, what I want is, I don't know, like an eighth of an ounce, ounce of a sixteenth of an ounce. And then they see the little car driving to them. Once, uh, as soon as it's at the address, they walk down, grab a little bag. Payment is already handled through the app. He's doing that in um, Sacramento, and he just sent me a video, like I think a week or two ago, where it was featured on I think CBS or CNN. Like he was actually in the news um, in Sacramento, and he got a, did a TV interview on his new applications, and he already has users on that, and he that's his full time business. That's his company that he's building right now. Um, on the other side, I already mentioned um, Aaron in New York who was an office uh, front desk manager before and now works as a developer at Artsy. We also have students um, out in California who are now workers and startups. We have another student out in Munich in Europe. Um, he works now for Enernoc, which is a huge tech company. And um, he's building dashboards for energy efficiency management and analysis. So he's their web developer there. We have another student here in Boston. He's now a, a Ruby on Rails engineer, too. Actually, he doesn't even apply for the junior job. He jumped straight three levels because he was that good. So that's what people are doing, the landing jobs. They're building out their own web applications. So I hope that answered that question. Um, really exciting stuff. I'm really proud of all our students because um, they're doing really great stuff. So let's see what else we have. I think that's pretty much it. I hope I didn't miss anyone's questions. Guys, um, I quickly want to check here. Somebody put anything here? Not really. Oh, I think we, th those are all the questions that you guys have. Thanks so much for coming by, watching. This was a lot of fun. And yeah, I suggest go to the pre-work, apply for that, and um, let me know once you're applying so we can get you started getting coding going, and then we can see if we can have you in the core program um, coding with us. Other than that, stay awesome. Thanks so much for coming, and I'll see you next time.